deal with Hurricane Burl. Uh, the governor is on a pre-planned trip, uh, economic trip uh, for Texas, and we are in touch, and we have been in touch. Uh, but it's our responsibility here in Texas um, to prepare everyone for this hurricane. It's still a tropical storm as we speak, but it will be a hurricane, uh, and it will strengthen most likely, and it will be a deadly storm for people who are directly in that path. And that's what we want to talk about today. Coastal, inland, and the Houston area are the three areas that I see that I want to be sure everyone is alert. Uh, yesterday, I declared an additional 81 counties in the disaster area, so we are now at 120 counties in the disaster area. You may ask why. Uh, one of the reasons is, as this storm moves, and the good news is that it looks like it will move quickly through the state. If you'll remember Harvey many years ago, that storm hung around for days at a time because it slowed down dumping rain on rain and rain. This will be a heavy rain event, but the storm will move quickly, at least as the forecast is right now, and that is subject to change. But it will go up through the state. So areas like College Station could see significant rain and flooding. last uh, 12 hours to 15 hours of a hurricane coming ashore, then all communities inland should be prepared for heavy rain and potential flooding. And that's why you need to listen to your local officials uh, as well in your local forecast for where you live. On the coast, uh, we have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who are spending their summer vacation there, uh, holiday weekend on top of that. And there is a concern uh, that because they're not in their daily routine of watching the news or checking their internet or checking their emails, that they may not be aware of this storm. One of the things that kind of trigger our concern a little bit, we've looked at all of the roads leaving the coast and the maps are still green. So we don't see many people leaving. And uh, what you will hear from our chief of our emergency management team, Nim Kidd, in a few moments, is that you don't want to be on the road tomorrow. Tomorrow will be a bad day for weather. Uh, this storm is predicted right now by the National Hurricane Center uh, to land somewhere between Corpus uh, Christi and Galveston Island. So if you're at Galveston, you may say, oh, it's down in Corpus. If you're at Corpus, you're saying, gee, it's coming right here. This can change and very often will change as we've seen from past storms. The National Hurricane Center actually says their average change of where they predict a storm to fall and where it falls can be 50 to 60 miles. Uh, in the last 12 to 15 hours. So we could see movement on the storm. But right now, if you're between Corpus and Galveston, uh, be prepared. Kids, number one mission, and your local mayors and your local county judges and officials is to save your life. That's number one. Property can be rebuilt, um, but lives cannot be. This storm has already left nine deaths in its path through the Caribbean, we don't want number 10 to be in Texas. And so what can you do to help us help you? Number one, again, if you're moving, today's the day to move away from those areas. If you're concerned, there's an area warning and as well as a watch along that coastal area we've discussed. Number two, um, if you're staying in place, uh, be sure you're prepared. You don't want to have to go out tomorrow to get water uh, or food or put gas in your car, it would be a good thing to do it today. A third, if you do venture out, which we strongly advise against, as we always do, do not drive through flooded roadways. There will be some serious flooding. Now, this is a narrow storm. It's not a big, broad storm. But where it's going to hit, and if it is a, a Hurricane 2, it's predicted to be a Hurricane 1, but it could grow to a 2. Um, that's That gets your wind level up pretty high, plus the gust. Um, you're going, to see, you're going to see a lot of problems in those specific areas. But rain is going to be everywhere, and flooding could be everywhere, and a storm surge from Corpus to Galveston Island. So a lot to watch for. Um, I know from my own life experience, well, they always predict more, and they say more than nothing. significant wind, significant rain, and some flooding, and again, surge along the coast. So 
help us help you. Uh, we are prepared and we have been preparing for the last week. Um, and we are going to now looking at being ready to go into our recovery mode next. And that will begin once this storm hits landfall. So landfall is predicted tonight. Uh, you'll start seeing the winds pick up, some rain coming into some of these areas. Uh, landfall sometime, 3 or 4 in the morning, depending where it falls, up till 6 or 7 in the morning. The storm could be out of the area maybe by late tomorrow afternoon or tomorrow night if it doesn't slow down. And then it will go up through the inland part of the state and hopefully be gone out of here by Tuesday afternoon or Tuesday evening or maybe even a little sooner if it keeps moving at its current pace. But it's a serious storm. Um, and... You must take it seriously uh, and be prepared. Uh, one thing I would say, uh, lastly, before I turn it over to Nim, is many of you who are watching now have friends and family who live on the coast or who are visiting the coast. Call them, text them, email them. Look, the media is very important to get the word out. We count on that. But call your friends and your family members and say, hey, by the way, do you know that Hurricane Burl is is coming to your area, and we're not exactly sure between Corpus and Galveston where it's going to hit, and there's going to be flooding, and you're not going to be able to drive tomorrow, um, be sure they know, because a lot of people are on vacation, like I say, not watching the storm, or they hear, well, it's a tropical storm, which it is now, but it's going to strengthen to a hurricane very soon, or it's a Category 1. Trust me, you don't want to be in a Category 1. You know, you're looking at winds 85, 90 miles an hour. You don't want to be in that. You don't want to be in 6 and 12 inches of rain. You don't want to be in flooding. So help us help everyone along the coast for sure and those inland uh, be, be watching out as well, as well as Houston. That storm could keep moving that way. Uh, NIMKIT is the best in the country. We have the best emergency management team in the country. Uh, we have been through so many storms in Texas, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to him to give you more detail, but I'm very confident that Texas is ready. Uh, your local officials are ready. I've talked to a lot of them. NIM has talked to a lot of them. I just want you to be ready. NIM? Thank you, Governor. Uh, as Governor Patrick mentioned, we have about six hours before the first tropical storm force winds line up somewhere along the Texas coast. Now is the time to make your final preparations in responding to this threat. Uh, there will be power outages. Let, be, let that be known. There's going to be some place in Texas that with these tropical and hurricane force winds, we are going to have power outages. Now is the time to make sure that all of your devices are charged up, that your phones are charged up, your computers are charged up, and that you have fuel in your vehicles. We have been in contact with every county judge along the Texas coast and their emergency management teams. Our agency has people in their emergency operations center. We have prepared search and rescue teams, emergency medical support teams. Uh, and we've also anticipated power outages for those that are power dependent. And so that's very important. If you have a family member that requires electricity, there partners to check in with their debris contractors. The faster we get debris cleaned up, the faster we get back on the road to recovery. And for you personally, it's not too late to make sure you have all of the documents your insurance company is going to require that you have them able to find. Most importantly, lead, heed the warning of your local officials and stay tuned to your local meteorologist because this path will likely change before landfall. I'm going to quickly run through some of the state agency resources that are supporting our local partners as we end preparation, move into response, and prepare for recovery. The Texas Division of Emergency Management has staff supporting our local EOCs and staging areas, as well as talking to the 911 call centers, cellular service providers, amateur radio operators, and satellite communications. Texas A&M Forest Service has all hazard strike teams, which are local government firefighters from across the state. They are staged ready to support those local governments that are impacted. They have incident management teams available, as well as saw crews to help us with debris cleanup. The AgriLife Extension Service and Animal Health Commission are working with our livestock partners to make sure that livestock and all of their equipment are out of the way and any animal shelter issues that we have. Texas A&M Task Force One has structural urban search and rescue teams and theater, as well as our swift water rescue boats, swimmers for our aircraft that you'll hear about in a few minutes, and then our medical support teams. Texas Commission on Environmental Quality has staff ready to support water, wastewater, and public drinking water systems. TxDOT has to assist in evacuation of motorists for those that get stranded or run out of fuel along the highways. 
Department of Information Resources making sure that all of our cybersecurity systems are up. The Department of Public Safety has Highway Patrol out in force. All of their aircraft are available for us as well as their Marine unit. Texas Parks and Wildlife Game Wardens and their boats are out in force as well as their state police from their parks. Department of State Health Services has rostered the Emergency Medical Task Force, which is over 50 ambulances, seven AM buses, 25 missed personnel, and 10 medics to go on additional buses. These are staged to help if we have to evacuate any hospital, nursing home, or assisted living facility. Texas Military Department has almost 300 people in the field today that are for ground transportation units. They will help us do high water evacuations if that's needed. They have their aircraft that we're able to do rescue with, and they are already in position to do point of distribution or pod distributions for those areas that do have power outages or may have water issues. Finally, I want to thank our volunteer organizations active in disaster, the Red Cross, the Salvation Army, and all of those VOAD partners that will come in and help us do cleanup after the fact. Public Utility Commission has been working hard with the electric co-ops in the area as well as AEP and Centerpoint to make sure that state agencies and personnel are ready. There will be power outages. We have medical assets that are available. There will be inland flooding. And what we find is this freshwater inland flooding tends to be more of a killer of our citizens than the actual storm surge. So please, please do not drive through water. Thank you, Governor. Media and on the cameras along the coast, there are a lot of people still in the water, and these rip currents are deadly. In fact, there's a warning all the way across the entire Gulf Coast. This storm is going to impact rip currents even in Florida and Alabama and Mississippi and Louisiana. So it's not smart to be in the water today or tomorrow or the day after. Deadly. We've already had a number of people drown before this storm in Texas because of rip currents and around, the, and around the Gulf Coast. So please, if you're in the water, uh, you know, even knee deep can get you out there. So be very careful. Secondly, on the roads, if you drive up to a road and you see water and you're not sure of how deep it is, but you're saying, well, there's no barrier there. Well, the barriers may have been blown away or TxDOT couldn't get there because of the storm to put the barriers there. So just don't drive across a road where you don't know the bottom because your car will just, in a few feet of water, you'll be drifting down the river. So please be careful. Those are, as Nim said, the, the flooding after the fact. Uh, let me give you this, and we will have rain, by the way, after the storm goes through, and we, again, we hope it's a, it continues to be a fast-moving storm, 10, 12, 13 miles an hour, but we're going to have tropical rain continuing probably for a number of days in some of the areas uh, for the week. So that can pour on top of the rain we get and still. Dot Texas uh, dot gov slash barrel. So TDEM, T-D-E-M uh, dot Texas, spell it out, dot gov slash barrel, B-E-R-Y-L. Uh, any questions? Hey, Governor. Uh, what are you hearing from? What are you asking from? Yeah. So FEMA has been here with us in the Emergency Operations Center since before we even let y'all know that we were working on this. Yeah. We are very close contact with our FEMA regional administrator who lives and works in Denton. He and I have been talking several times a day. At this point, remember Texas by federal law needs to have $54 million of uninsured public damage and public loss before the president can grant a major disaster declaration. We don't have those dollars yet. With the size of this storm, and we're praying we don't get to that point. But if we do, we are tied in very close to our federal partners. And how much is for assets? Uh, assets, you know, equipment, uh, manpower, that's So they have pre-positioned some response assets as well as some food and water and blue tarps for our use if we need them. That will be on top of what we already have available as our own state resources. Any other questions? We're counting on the media to get the word out. Um, uh, we are on watch and have been on watch. Uh, the people who work at the emergency management team here, it's 24-7. Uh, so we will be with you through the storm. Uh, watch for our, our updates uh, at tdem.texas.gov slash barrel. And uh, late hand, go ahead.
Yes. Is there anything about this storm, though, that y'all are keeping an eye on or that might be of particular concern? You know, I uh, uh, reached out to uh, Nim about four in the morning uh, several days ago, and I sent him a text, and I said, the thing that concerns me about this storm is uh, what happened back in 2008 uh, when the storm was predicted to go up through Victoria and Sugar Land, and we had a team call. I was in the Senate then um, with the then uh, governor and lieutenant governor, and we were assured that's where it was going. And people on Bolivar Island at that time um, felt like they were out of harm's way and many stayed. And overnight, that storm moved about 40 miles. And we all know that tragedy of Bolivar Island. And many of those people drowned and some were washed out to sea. So that was the first thing that really came to my mind because we often see the hurricanes kind of come up, you know, through the Caribbean like a straight shot. But these storms that come up through the eastern Caribbean and then come over uh, the Yucatan Peninsula and kind of come in the back door. A lot of people aren't watching it as much, and they don't take them as seriously. So we're, we're not suggesting that this is going to be an Ike or a Harvey that stayed over land a lot. But these storms, uh, and Cat 1s are serious storms. If you're in the way of Cat 1, that's bad news. And again, many people watching right now will not be affected or lightly affected in the coast and inland. But I assure you, some watching are going to have significant wind, 85 to 100 miles an hour. Uh, every Texan uh, is safe, and that's our number one job, save lives. And Governor, if I may, um, most Texans have seen a four-day holiday weekend, not yeah. the folks in the room behind me. And I think that's one of my concerns is the timing of this with everybody being on vacation, kids are out of school right now. It's a great time. But I need to make sure that I get your help in getting the message out to those that are still in harm's way that may not realize it yet. You know, we're at a place right now that we have no deaths in Texas related to this storm. I'd sure like to keep it that way. One way is that we get this turnaround, don't drown message out. Yes. Another way is if you lose power, carbon monoxide poisoning and carbon monoxide killings are very dangerous. It's a colorless, odorless gas, and too many people will start a generator inside their garage or inside their house to power their appliances. So anything that you can do to help us get that message out, those are preventable deaths. We'd appreciate your support. Uh, thank you, and we will uh, keep you updated. Thank you all very much. Thanks, everyone.